Welcome back to Linux Weekly. Oh, no. Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about the things that we personally found going interest going interesting. Yes, roll with it, Vin. Uh, in the world of <laughs> Linux open source, floss, all the fun stuff. And Vin, that is Jill who's getting ready to run out of screeching right after the show. And yeah. um, <laughs> Zod himself trapped in the lower monitor there. That is one Pedro Mateus, man. How is the get Phantom? You, Kal-El. <laughs> oh, well. oh man, I can't believe they. Well, I actually, I take that back. Man. I can believe they canceled that because I watched the first series. I was like, this isn't, but it's canceled. It's like lovely. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> anyway, before we get into the nonsense, uh, speaking about where are you going? Are you going to Vegas? Yay! Are you going on like a drug fueled trip? <laughs> No, <laughs> no. So right after the show, I'm leaving for the Open Source Summit North America in San Diego put on by the Linux Foundation. And once again, the Linux Foundation, thank you for giving the Linux Chicks LA a scholarship. And I will be uh, doing some reporting for LWW, of course, and come back with some interviews and walk through. Do you hear that, everyone? That was your warning. <laughs> you see, Joe, you run. run. Yeah. He catches run. you. You got to deal with yeah. it. <laughs> so anyone who's there wants to talk to me you'll see me i won't be hard to find also, hard to find <laughs> also if if you're talking to jill grab the mic point it towards you yeah yes <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> oh man uh so <laughs> I, I I'm I'm a distro hopping Vin these days, man. Yes. <laughs> uh, went to go party with Fedora because um, wanted to get DaVinci up and running. Right, got that up and running. Right, DaVinci doesn't. It's a, it's its own beast. Ran some issues with Fedora. Fedora mainly that you know I like my systems to shut down. Um, <laughs> Among some other things, Fedora, I love you. It's great for a desktop. It's just, it was a bad idea to play with it in production. And really the only LTS games that you have for something that has to do more like with a workstation is you got Ubuntu, you got Scent. And, you know, if I could hold held out a little longer, you know, Scent right now when that kernel's starting with three, that's a little too long in the tooth. So I rolled over to Debian 10. This is the first time I've ever used Debian as a desktop. No, these two boxes don't count. Ah, and yes. This shot. I mean, these are running Debian 10, but these things are butter robots. They run, they're running full metal real-time kernels. I mean, they boot into Chrome. That's their job. But, um, yeah, I stuck this together, mm-hmm. got everything up and running. Of course, I ran into the, like, oh, that's how we do things here in Debian land. Got that. No major ganchos. Uh Did learn that Deb Multimedia Org, that's your friend. Mm-hmm. That, that's oh, absolutely yeah. a thing if you want to play with that. And, you know, if you want, like, FFmpeg out of the box with NVN code, there you go. Everything else. Mm-hmm. I would... Uh, Maybe offer this suggestion. If you're going to, and I don't care if you're Canonical, Susie, whoever, Fedora, if you're going to have the equivalent of a build essentials package, Pedro, hear me out. Hear me out. Um, do you think this is, may- maybe I'm asking too much, that may just maybe it should include the stuff needed to, you know, being an essentials package, m- just mm-hmm. it couldn't, you know, compile the kernel uh yeah that that would be nice but I you mean, know in or even per- including the freaking uh what what is it the c plus plus compiler <laughs> or is no. that a part of it yeah. now <laughs> well to be fair the kernel is not an essential part of a linux i mean <laughs> what are you talking about it's not like it's the heart of the upper oh, oh wait it's a second. the equivalent of dlc <laughs> man uh, yeah but yeah i did that and uh, Debian, they ship real-time kernels. If you do the RT, uh, which is don't tread here if you have Blackmagic hardware or if you have NVIDIA cards, even though there's an export variable to make that driver compile in real time, I don't suggest you do it. Uh, mm. So I built a low latency kernel. I want to give just mad props to Canonical for actually really the only distribution I know that ships a low latency kernel because the low latency preempt, which is not full metal RT is available in the kernel. And they make that of like, Oh, would you like to, I don't know, make music or multimedia on your system here. Here's the option. Everybody else is like, figure it out. FOs. 
<laughs> no, we're targeting the desktop. Yeah, how's that going for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Canonical's great for that. I mean, that's, yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that's actually very good. Pedro, how are things with you, sweetheart? Uh, very warm, uh, but yeah, no, over here, uh, the only news I have to report is that I gave one of my laptops away to chat realm person. I'm sure Zoe will let me know exactly just what is wrong with it, because she seems to be very good at that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, in the meantime, I got another old laptop that's very, very broken and uh, a little manky in places. Don't and feel even bad after for Nori. I... Nori had to go through a wide range of emotions. She's like, oh, you're getting rid of a laptop? Uh, another one just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, another one just showed up. <laughs> Balance and all things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's a dell e uh 4200 it is tiny it's like netbook sized uh, it still needs a battery it didn't come with half of the um you know inner amenities but it, it it's working now it just needs a battery so looking forward to that <laughs> right on mm -hmm. so awesome. when you, you get it up and running the first thing we should install on it's Nopix. Yes. Oh, we could Nopix totally would install Nopex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. it is based on Debian 10 Buster. And mm -hmm. well, after four years of using System D, they have decided, you know what? Let's just go back to in it because yeah. eh, uh, people are mm -hmm. used to or people used to know in it at least to some degree. And it sort of kind of worked. So yeah, Nopex 8.6 is uh basically dropping um system d altogether they're going back to the old one and everyone seems to be okay with that sort of mm -hmm. <laughs> well it's nopix man i mean yeah you, you know what it is you've heard about it but you haven't been over to its house it's that distribution <laughs> and I, I, I think i can say you know is system be a hot wet stinky mess kind of shrug is in it that's debatable too and don't pretend it's not okay and <laughs> it's something i want to bring up yeah but i i don't have righteous hatred towards system i'm just like does it boot all right well i have yeah. uh on many occasions um you know <laughs> voiced my quibbles about system d basically being on track if not already being there uh mm -hmm. to becoming the linux equivalent of svchost.exe on windows and to, to anyone who's ever had to deal with yeah. Windows and look, oh, look, there's an SVC host.exe mm -hmm. that's um, using 100% of a CPU thread. Yeah. What's it doing? Yeah. That's fine. On Windows, yeah. you just kill the process, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then blue screen yeah. of death. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I agree with you, Vin. Um, um, I'm actually, I, I actually like System D. But I think it is still great that Nopix is going back to system the system D um, uh, to be system D free like Dev One uh, because being one of the first live CD distros, independence was built in the Nopix philosophy for sure. So I can see why they went back to Init D again. And, oh man, they're yeah. not pawns and <laughs> pawns for big system D, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, con controlling the Linux ecosystem. Uh, it took me a while to uh, manage to wrestle myself away from the uh, Dev One uh, mailing list mm -hmm. because for some reason they would just not let me go. It's like I already subscribed. Oh. Please let me go. Please. <laughs> no, you should come back. Oh. The freedom, uh, the freedom of your init systems. Like no. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I get both sides, and especially server side. I think there's a better argument to be made against systemd, but for if you mm. get some booting from a browser, this is not a holy war I'm interested in. But if you are, that's cool too. We can still be friends at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> however, oh, speaking of alienating people, <laughs> yeah, a move that really doesn't affect anything. But you know, I wanted to touch on this before the internet lost its mind. And the upcoming Fedora 31, um, I'm going to stop producing and distributing. Uh, basically the i686 repos. So before everyone panics, yet multi-arch, still a thing. Mm -hmm. 
you know, mm -hmm. but you're not going to notice this unless you're like, Hey man, I can't wait. I just bought this shiny. <laughs> I just got out of my time machine with my brand new Pentium four. Boy, I can't wait to install a district. What do you mean? Fedora 31 doesn't support I386. <laughs> <I'm outraged. laughs> that if that's your use case, a better use for your time machine, B womp womp too bad. But outside of that, this this is good, right? For now. Yeah, this is yeah. Most distros are mm. already dropping their dedicated i686 or x86 underscore 32 being optional there. Just the 32 bit mm -hmm. repos in general. They're this is inevitable. It, it, yeah. it makes sense. Mm -hmm. As long as the multi-libs stay and people are able to install Steam, I don't think anyone will mind. Yeah. Speaking mm -hmm. of Steam, just go clawing back to Debian 10. That's a bit of an adventure, guys. I'm not saying that I, you might want to sort that. that, that oh, good. yeah. Very Installing true. Installing yeah. <laughs> Steam required some Googling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so... Anyway, uh, we want to share a little bit of love because the, the primary way we pay the bills here is to all the beautiful people supporting us through Patreon because, hey, we don't put ads on our stuff. And Slackware had some issues a while back. Um, you know, one of the ways uh, the dude who was getting financed, he had a merch store. And after several years, turned to find out he was getting hosed by the people running that store. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like bad. Mm -hmm. Like I read that and I was like, I don't run Slack. Here's some money. Bad. And it's like, okay. But um, there's a new way to finance it, Joe. Yeah. So this is awesome. So now you can support Slackware on Patreon. And uh, Slackware founder Patrick Volkerding started a Patreon to raise funds to keep Slack going. Yay. And I was, you know, I was remem remembering like Ven, there was concern that the project might have to end unless funds were raised to keep it going. And this was... This is a very important distro. This was the the first Linux distro I installed and cut my teeth on back in 1993 and how is a, how I learned Linux. And I am a Patreon now, but have donated money to Slack in years past. And for a donation of a dollar or more, you should do the same. It's really awesome. You know, support support Linux. And, you know, this 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 was Linus's Linux distro. <laughs> so it's very important. <laughs> yeah. And it, mm -hmm. it's Slackware. It's the old school of Linux. And if the yeah. old school of Linux is going to Patreon and saying, look, I need some money and look, yeah. you want to help mm -hmm. me and help Slackware still uh, be a thing and be a thing for many, many years, Patreon. And I, I'm totally behind this. Good job. Uh, yeah. And he's already... Uh, got 319 patrons. That awesome. is freaking awesome. That is, that is awesome. really, really awesome. <laughs> um, it's not a commercial for Patreon, but one thing it does for you know ourselves included, it gives us a budget. We're like, okay, yep. we know what we can spend each month. Yeah. With that type of setup, and you know, the stuff costs money. Unfortunately, it's like, hey, maybe. Maybe we need to start playing the lottery, then we can win the lottery. Then we just, yeah, <laughs> we're just going to do it anyway, because this, this is what we'd be doing anyway. Support Slackware. Uh, I add a principle because I get a lot of traction from, you know, using Slackware 1.0. And it's like, this is as user friendly as a coiled rattlesnake. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. um, yes. <laughs> good learning times. Google didn't exist. Oh, hard yes. mode. X free eighty six can fig all the things. <laughs> think about oh, man, <laughs> I wasn't trying day. to get X running on Slack. Uh, <laughs> people who are making and contributing back to the Linux ecosystem, making things easier in their own way, are are the uh, rabid ninjas over at System seventy six. Yeah. So this is the System76 Firmware Updater. Yes. So the Firmware Manager supports checking and updating firmware from the LVFS and System76 Firmware Services, is Wayland compatible, and provides both a GTK application and library. And I was so happy about this. So way to go, System76, for making it platform agnostic via GTK app that will also work in all the window managers. Awesome. And this is also wonderful because the GUI firmware management software FWUPD from 
uh, FWUPT UPD has only been distributed via GNOME software or KDE Discover, thus eliminating Linux distros that have their own software centers. So this will work on all the distros and all the window managers. Way to go, yeah. System76. Yay! <laughs> so I remember about a year ago, it was more than a year ago at this point, uh, there was this big... Um, fuss between system 76 and um one of the gnome developers there was even a couple of blog posts basically calling each other out uh where uh, yeah. uh system 76 decided no we're not going to use uh, lvfs or uh, fwupd because we're doing our own mm -hmm. thing yeah i yeah. bet that gnome person feels really smug right about now just saying <laughs> <laughs> Because this is the internet. We are not allowed <laughs> to grow as a company or a human or individual. You must be hard set in your tracks for all times on everything that you've said. <laughs> oh, no. Or, 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 by all means, or, change or, it is an author. You will be judged as somebody who flip flops, right? That's how it works. Yeah. Hi, internet. <laughs> you will always be judged. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro remembers, man. Um, the internet yeah. remembers. That's one of the things. <laughs> um, good news, everyone. Katie and Live, 19.8. Zero eight, it's out. Um, the big highlight from this that you want to take a look at it is you can now do what they're aiming for, and they've made huge progress with this, is the full editing with keyboard shortcuts. I'm a big fan of that. That's the big seller in this release. Another thing is for when you're recording directly in KDN Live, because for some reason you want to do that, uh, you can now control uh, which channels that's coming through and sample rates, nice. you know, 44, 100, 4800, anything like that. It's looking good. Um, I'm down with it. And they're just showing off some of the things in our web zone. You go back in and our show notes, check out all this nonsense of what mm -hmm. they're working on and how it works. But every time I see a release, there's the nice little going from mono to stereo with your sample rates nice. and all that. Good work. Mm -hmm. Good work on that. Still going to need some OpenCL or CUDA acceleration before I can like go back to using it for these shows. I mean, the UI and usability that's there with Katie and Live. It's awesome. I use it to make mm -hmm. uh, the credits each and every week for these shows. But, 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 um, mm -hmm. not having that grunt behind the timeline and rendering is very much like having a car analogy. Get ready. An Aston Martin powered by a three cylinder diesel engine. <laughs> it's like, it looks nice. And, you know, <laughs> it, I like sitting down in it and it's flashy and okay, let's race. <laughs> and this is this is not an issue with Katie and Live. This is an issue with MLT, but considering one doesn't work without the other, just yeah. yeah. It's a great project though. You guys do an excellent oh, job. Oh, oh, awesome. And and with this update, you can now view thumbnails of clips in the project bin. Um, and you can play them back by hitting shift. So you can see a preview of your movie or animation. And you can adjust the speed of a clip by pressing control plus dragging a clip in the timeline, which is really awesome. It used to be that that would just control the duration of the clip on the timeline. And now um, you can do that as well as, as automatically speed up or uh, decrease the speed of a clip. And... Uh, to Vent's point, an open source video editing alternative that uses GPU rendering, albeit very ex experimental, is Shotcut. And it actually works really, really well. It isn't, Shotcut isn't as powerful as Caden Live, but it does have GPU rendering now, <laughs> which is really nice. <laughs> the GPU rendering, um, that's nice. The accelerated timeline stuff, this is what like sold me mm -hmm. immediately mm -hmm. when I loaded up. Because I'm a closed source shell for Black Magic Hardware now. Um, yeah, <laughs> is loading up like one of our studio projects, and I was like, "Wait, I just, this thing keeps up with me." With I was like, "I will learn all of this just yeah, from Da Vinci's being amazing. able to fly through yeah. the timeline." <laughs> da Vinci started its life as a Linux only product. Correct. So mm -hmm. that's definitely a thing. Great job, everyone. Also, the uh, Cinderella, has, they've started uh, experimental yeah. uh, GPU acceleration. They have. On the yeah. timeline. Something mm -hmm. that has had GPU acceleration built into it for some time now, Pedro, is everyone's yes. favorite thing, OBS. 
Well, uh, if uh, you have some video to edit, chances are you probably used OBS to get it. At least if you're trying to capture some windows uh, on your desktop. But yeah, uh, the one of the bits of functionality that was there was being able to use um, the GPU to decode videos. If you added a video source to um, OBS directly instead of just capturing the window of a player or anything else, um, it used to be able to do hardware acceleration for that. That was broken uh, past mm. version. I think the uh, the past major release, it was basically broken the whole time. But uh, they have fixed that. Uh, and being able to use the GPU uh, while the CPU is taking care of the recording or the streaming is very important. Uh, it can lower the bitrate if you're streaming, uh, if it detects that your network is like something happened and it took a bit of a dive. It will lower the uh, the bitrate if you set that option instead of dropping frames. If you prefer to have the frames dropped but not lower the bitrate because that could cause other issues, you can still uh, keep that behavior. And Ven will probably talk more about this, but while there is no native uh, browser capture directly from OBS, at least on Linux, they uh, that option is there for Windows and they are improving on that option mm -hmm. for Windows. It's mm -hmm. just not there on Linux. It's not there on Linux. They're still working on it on Windows, but th they've been kicking that can down the road, passing that football mm -hmm. for years on Linux. They're like, well, we're, we're, we're getting to it now. Mm -hmm. It's another project I back is OBS. And I know it's doable because somebody has basically taken Chromium and shoved it into a plugin. It's like, why is this plugin 1.4 gigs? That's why. <laughs> but yep. it works. It's got issues, but it does work. Um, OBS browser plugin on Linux. I would like to see that natively integrated. Mm. Uh, I think that'd be a little more beautiful, but uh, go play with it. They get a good Discord. Absolutely. They get a good bot in yeah. their Discord and their build directory that keeps you updated. And Jim is a source of humor when you get the push of like, no, I said fix it, not break it more in the bot update. <laughs> so uh -huh. they've also added the ability to pause, which is like, that's yeah. kind of interesting. So if you're streaming, mm -hmm. you can pause. I don't, I don't, I can't yeah. imagine the use case, but mm -hmm. hey, it's the thing. Convenience. It's <laughs> there. All right, weebs. Mm -hmm. uh, something we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Anime 4K, don't worry. There will be no tentacles because this is a high quality real time anime upscaler. However, it will not prevent you from using said tentacles. Uh, <laughs> state of the art, open source, high quality real time anime upscaling algorithm that can be implemented in any programming language. So you can kind of see what it does, man. Bilinear, mm. NGU, Waifu, 2X, and apparently there's Heating applications to upscale anime. And which, this surprises yeah. you how exactly? Uh, <laughs> I love learning things. This is now something I know. So it's 1.0 release candidate. You can play with it. And they've released the uh, GLSL shaders for MPV. So uh, it, check it out. I, if you like your old anime with a side of crisp, uh, crispy tentacles. That's not going to be a show title, so don't even try. No. <laughs> Although I could go for some calamaris, now that you mention it. Uh, the, Aww, <laughs> I want some sushi. Yeah. Uh, it works with uh, MPV, and uh, honestly, I try to decipher what is going on, but I keep getting distracted by the pictures of anime, so I can never figure it out. I'm sure someone will let me know exactly how to do it. Uh, but yeah, it works with MPV, and MPV is, lo is that... Um, media player that I have it, that I always use as like my go-to in the event that VLC can play something or there's something weird going on with the audio. It's like, let's try MPV. And for the most part, it does a very good job of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, M MPV and its M player roots have always been a great way to play anime video files with subtitles, a la MKV. In some, some circumstances, it's another reason why the anime um, animations are often in MKV because they can do multiple subtitles with it. And MPV and MPlayer were always really good for, for the playback. So this really makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but then waifu in 4k dude I, 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 yeah. I'll straight up throw down watch some anime but here's the problem I have with it the same way with sports balls like the local collegiate team in this town that I've adopted I'm like this is not bad I enjoy this team and I'll say that to somebody who's a sports nerd and he was like oh what do you think about this well the last year and I was like I, I just F off I don't know that much and I was like team good I like you know what I watch but I would never go through this much trouble not a chance but hey i'm glad it exists that makes me happy yeah a little bit of blender mm -hmm. news this week on japanese anime studio i'm going with kahara does that sound legit yeah. is that moving to blender <laughs> because blender's new hotness and they really dig it i don't even know what this is uh it's like one of their old <laughs> you may videos. know them as the people who are mm -hmm. currently working on the rebuild of evangelion yeah mm -hmm. that's definitely yeah. a thing but <laughs> They thought about doing this because it's going to be easier for them to work with. You'll touch to that more in a minute. And we're just seeing more and more studios roll away from 3D Studio Max, which, you know, you're looking at $1,500 yes. per seat per year because they want Adobe on you. That's right. Yeah. Autodesk is <laughs> like that. You got, you got to buy it. Per oh, year. yes. Blender, low, low price of free and, you know, the whole grease pencil thing and all that. And it has the added benefit of running on something other than Windows period. Mm -hmm. So yep. Jill, hit me. Yeah. So, and, and Blender's Grease Pencil, which integrates 2D animation with 3D, is an animator's dream and an industry standard first. And as Kara states, we finally got a 3D creation tool like paper and pencil. Yay. So having both 3D and 2D integrated makes the workflow much easier because you don't have to transition between several programs and convert to several different file formats which is the bane of an animator's existence with files that don't convert qu correctly. Believe me, I've known this for the last 30 years. And so this, this totally makes sense. And I think many more animation studios are going to follow suit for sure. It, this is uh, a really a, a great move in the industry and it's showing the, the power of Blender. <laughs> Really awesome. Honestly, I just want to see mm -hmm. uh, the rebuild of Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0. <laughs> it's been it's been a long time, guys. Come on. All yes. Right. Calm down, <laughs> Wade. Please. Yes. Please. Open drop. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> well, um, well, Open Drop is an open source airdrop, as the name would imply. Very clever naming scheme. I think Jordan would be proud. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the project, basically what it does is it gives you an open source alternative that is compatible with uh, Apple's airdrop. And I'm the, the way that they currently have it working, the only way that, say, if you have an iPhone or an iPad and you want to use airdrop, to drop something into whatever box is running this, uh, you, you could will drop need to it, you, set you it. You could put it in your Raspberry Pi. You could go <laughs> war pieing. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you can totally just random <laughs> drop strangers. But they have to have their phones set uh, to receive uh, files from everyone. And after the incident that happened uh, a couple of years ago, that a lot of people were uh, being airdropped genital pics of strangers. They probably don't have that uh, as a default anymore. <laughs> and yeah, though my suggestion would be for mm -hmm. Apple to allow people to trust specific devices. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't kill them if they added that bit of functionality. But mm -hmm. knowing this is Apple we're mm -hmm. talking about, that's not going to happen. Nah, they'll find a way to kill it. Jill? Yeah. Oh, I think this is a wonderful <laughs> open source alter alternative to Apple's AirDrop. And it's just nice to have one. And it, this... OpenDrop doesn't support multiple file sending like AirDrop does, but it, it may in the future. But but uh, that's a functionality that's not crucial yet. So as long as you can send your your files via open source and terminal, should be happy. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the next one comes uh, from us from Just, uh, down under. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Fox from Dog. M. Fox Dog. And speaking of the bane of an animator's, animator's existence, <laughs> such as myself or M. Fox Dog, this gets rid of the noise, or what I like to call the moray pattern, most commonly seen in animation renders of ray traced or path traced lifelike scenes and objects. Intel's Open Image Denoise is an open source library of high performance, high quality denoising filters for ray traced rendering, rendered images and animations. 
And it's really amazing how it works. It significantly reduces render times because it is using artificial intelligence. And what an awesome use of deep learning. This is, this is perfect to make our animation renders a lot faster. And this will make it easier uh, for studios like Disney, who is um, um, represented in that, in that preview that Ven showed. So uh, this is just really cool. And I know Foxy's been playing with it, and I'm going to have fun playing with this because this is this – is re- actually, this is kind of revolutionary <laughs> in the industry. I mean, it's Intel so. <laughs> Technologies, open sourcing yes. something that is genuinely useful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good on Yeah. Them. So before mm-hmm. we bounce out of here, we have one last little bit about – Distro hopping because some people yeah. they don't like to ins- <laughs> well they don't like to use Linux they like to make Linux something to do and this is one mm-hmm. way to streamline that process. Yeah, so this is distro test. Several months ago, when I found out about distro test, it was fairly new. I went to the website to test running a distro, and it gave me an error. Their servers were inundated with requests because so many people found out about it at once and wanted to test running live distros online. Now it works beautifully, and I just ran several of my favorite distros, including Damn Small Linux and Crux, without a hitch. And it even ran on mobile. I was so happy to get it to, to run on my uh, OnePlus One. And uh, the mouse does lag, of course, but that is expected because you are viewing the distros via QEMU hosted window with VNC through a web browser. So yeah, there's going to be some sl- slowdown, so expect that. But for testing distros, this is awesome. You don't have to use you know CD-ROMs and live USBs anymore and or run them in a VM. You can just test them on the website. It's amazing. Distrotest.net. And yeah, mm-hmm. if you are one of those people that's actively looking, it's like, I want to find a perfect mm-hmm. distro. Well, yes. this saves you from having to spool up mm-hmm. a VM or even like flashing some live uh, distro onto a USB drive. It You go to a website, it's like, I want to try that one. Yes. Mm, I want to try <laughs> that one. <laughs> <There>. Awesome. <laughs> and when you're done... <laughs> You need to realize something. The perfect distro is the one you're currently running. What you need to focus on is how to turn it into that. <laughs> it's been yes. in your heart yes. all along. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Everything's in our heart. <laughs> kind of like the beautiful people supporting all the fun stuff we do each and every week uh, over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. 114 of you are making the show possible. It's how we pay the bills. It's how we keep track of stuff and do all the fun things. Uh, if you want to join that, get access to our mm-hmm. Discord. You get early access to our show notes. Uh, an entire extra hour of LGC every week available in the audio RSS feed. It's kind of brilliant. I want to thank everybody mm-hmm. for making this possible. Uh, you the real MVPs. Uh, we have a new person this week who has increased their pledge yeah. because we're so awesome. Yeah, yes. Acid Monkey has increased his <laughs> pledge. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> he hasn't been in chat much. It's been a long time, but but thank you so much, Acid Monkey, and and feel free to come in on uh on uh our uh our. <laughs> You get I guess you're probably not watching anymore, Acid Monkey. That's why you increased your pledge. That's cool. No. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Please feel free to come in on Discord. There we go. We get I'm it. sorry. You are beautiful. We got some uh, affiliate links on the web zone. If you want to take a look at those, uh, thanks for everybody kicking in on that. We got a Amazon thing with a wish list and all that fun stuff. We have a list of all the studio hardware that if you're ever curious about everything in here and how we make it kind of work, air quotes around work, um, because we are treading new ground with a lot of stuff we do. There's no manual, so you have to deal with me week by week. Uh, I think that's about it. Libra pay, all that fun stuff. Keep being awesome. Now, mm-hmm. let's get into mm-hmm. a slice of pie. Mm, pie. It's a tiny, <laughs> tiny little Yum. slice of pie this week. But then again, Aww. you got a big show, so don't be greedy. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's well, it's another Pi tablet. We've seen this done many, many times, but this one uh, uh, is slightly different. It's is got that a, a Pi tablet, or is it a keyboard crooked, mm-hmm. or is it just me? Uh, I think that's just the bad shoop. Uh, <laughs> the the tablet itself is is running uh, on a custom PCB that uh, the um, the people behind it built. 
to the house. It's uh, it's based on a PCB that's currently widely available. It costs around $130 without fat. Uh, but yeah, uh, they t took that and slightly customized it so that it would run the uh, compute module for the Raspberry Pi 3, if you have one of those kicking around for some reason. Uh, you can turn that and this little PCB into a tablet. Uh, the one that uh, they have the picture on the website, it's a it's got an mm. eight inch screen, which is pretty good. Like tablet wise, I've used the mm -hmm. Nvidia Shield for many many years, and that, that is a very good tablet size. The case they say you can three D print yourself, and looking uh, at the pictures, that is clearly what they did, and it doesn't look terrible I've, I've seen much worse 3d prints to be honest <laughs> uh yeah it's it's not a bad project i just wish that someone would actually make a tablet that's worth using mm. and it's worth your uh the time investment that you will need to put it together yourself because th that is something i want to do again i'm still using that nvidia shield because hey guess mm -hmm. what android tablets <laughs> not really a thing anymore <laughs> Uh, speaking of yeah. android tablets man uh, i posted a link uh go find it yourself um on twitter the hd10 mm -hmm. 99 bucks right now if you're in the states oh, oh that's pretty cool good. <laughs> which that gets sent you like but it's fire oh you can install lineage on it now yeah. so if you're looking for a <laughs> cheap tinker tab that's got a 1080p screen and technically it has battery life go for that it's beautiful. <laughs> Technically. You, well, here's the thing. My gold standard is my Nexus 10, which has a 9,000 milliamp battery. Okay, yeah. that's a pretty big battery. <laughs> exactly. So you can leave that thing unplugged for weeks, and it still yeah. runs. It's kind of brilliant. So uh, let's bounce out of here. Maybe you want to tell us about... Uh, your adventures, your 3D printed pies. And we're like, man, <laughs> that's just called mixing it in a bowl and cooking it. But how could they do that, Pedro? How? You could do that very easily. Uh, you could even leave us a voicemail. Um, there's a number somewhere. I was uh, about to say, we, you, you want to fill that in because I don't know it by heart. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, there's a number somewhere. Um, I'm sure we'll. Um, Figure what figure out a way to work uh, on the interwebs and uh, put it on the contact page if you'd like to leave us that uh, voicemail. But ah. if you'd like us to read your message right here, right now, on this very <laughs> segment, the feedback it's called, uh, you can go to loosegamecast.com. You hit the contact button and you fill out the form. Make sure you pick LWDW. You can also pick uh, LGC Weekly for that uh, foul-mouthed Saturday show. What we do. Or you can ask Jordan for some relationship advice. And mm -hmm. if you're a game developer and you'd like to send us keys, just make sure to include three, please. Okay. I'm just Thank thinking, you. man, you know, now we get the number lit up, we can do wob lines where, where <laughs> Jordan handles relationship problems while I just like blast up step behind him, like to the point where it's hard to concentrate. It'll be great. Wob lines. Oh. <laughs> It'll be brilliant. All right. Um, one chunky bin. Um, yes, from very chunky. Yeah. Fairness. <laughs> uh, file sharing app. I'm behind in my podcast, but in LWDW 179, the 32 minute mark. Ooh, precise. I like that. You discuss teleport to share files. Yes. I would suggest Ducto, as it, it is, or the apostrophe, cross platform <laughs> and open source. Also, I use Razor Tartarus uh, and have a Nostromo N52 and N50 for gaming. After updating to 1804, no longer remaps keys. I'm thinking it's permission problem. Pedro, help me. How do I fix it? It still runs. It works as my N52 still remaps, activating the LED lights on the device, but not the keys. Developer has poof, smoke bobbed on me. Uh, thoughts? Uh, Keepy Master works. I would like not to have to clock through a GUI to select my key layout <laughs> for every game. <laughs> Any suggestions on where do I turn? For fixing this, Pedro. Well, um, um, what, what is it? Uh, Key Master, uh, KB Master, uh, was actually, if I'm not mistaken, developed by Michael Speth, which used to be person who watched the show. Um, he really didn't like the fact that we played Rocket Cars. <laughs> but if you really don't like the GUI, uh, there is 
a way you can test to see if it's a permissions issue. Basically, just chmod uh, 660 dev slash u input. I had a look through your GitHub and I saw the script. And that's loading the u input module into the kernel. So yeah, just change that uh, u, uh, change the dev u input permissions to 660 and see if that lets you remap. If it does, just create a um, u dev rule to set that permanently for your user group. I left an example of one in the show notes. You can go look at them. Uh, that should work. That's basically the same rule that the Steam controller uses for letting people uh, set keyboard strokes and mouse movement to the uh, analog pads and the buttons. So it should work. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you for putting it in the show notes. I look forward for that security alert from tomorrow (laughs) until the end of days from our software that scans our website and is like, what be this? It's a (laughs) UDEV I don't care, man. It looks sketchy. (laughs) <laughs> all right beautiful people thanks for showing up we'll be back next week we're gonna roll the credits and uh keep being awesome mm-hmm. bye 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 <laughs> <laughs> just okay. you, Here, i think i can i think i can i think i can <laughs> <laughs> Pedro Mateus. And the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I should mention, uh, that's also a very similar UDEV rule to the one I have set for my Rocat mouse mm. to rebind all the keys. Yeah. <laughs> but look at all the producers. The lovely, lovely producers. <laughs> They're awesome. We love you all. Yay. <laughs> Uh, 184 Wow. (laughs) I know, it's amazing. It's all thanks to you. Every single one of you. Thank you.